Whoa, 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 whoa! Got a whole other quad to cover. This guy's still got fluid in his lungs. Get him an O2 mask. His leg muscles have atrophied. Tendons have shortened from disuse, causing intense pain. Tendon surgery will make him more comfortable. More comfortable. More comfortable. Since when did House care about a patient's comfort? <laughs> okay, whatever Android has hijacked Mark Zuckerberg has also hijacked House here. It's the first episode of season three, House MD, meaning usually these opening episodes are epic. I'm sure this will be no exception where I will be adding some value as a doctor working in London. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does. And even if I don't, it's gonna be fun along the way. Oh, he definitely didn't want a burger. Okay, let's break this down. It looks like he's got a neurological condition, but clearly with preserved facial movements, although he's not speaking, um, he can move his eyes and presumably he can eat since he was offered a burger. And um, interesting though, since most people who have this severity of neurological condition would be fed by a tube in the stomach, called a PEG or percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, which he may have, and she was going to blend the burger and put it in the tube, but that you know would be a bit unusual. Um, the neurological condition could be a previous stroke, MS, brain bleed, motor neuron disease, like Stephen Hawking, or uh, you know, the MS, to be honest, would explain these flashes if you had something like optic neuritis. But the real question is, why did he throw himself into the pool? Initially, they're probably gonna say the obvious answer, which is he was depressed, he was trying to kill himself. But I think the actual answer will be that he was either exceptionally hot or exceptionally thirsty. Maybe it was a fever all this time and he had an infection that was misdiagnosed as a neurological condition and now House can cure it both. The fact that he was having a barbecue at the start and was offered a burger could be a clue that he got the infection from undercooked beef like Tania saginata or beef tapeworm, toxoplasmosis, echinococcus, or maybe he's recalling swimming in the freshwater lakes of Africa where he got schistosomiasis. Let's find out. What about Stephen Hawking trying to do the 500 butterfly? Forget it. Brain cancer, brain surgery, there's nothing left to diagnose. I would take the other one. Mm, I'll take them both. Oh, look at us, we're spoiled. We get two patients this episode. So patient two is a 26 year old female who was doing an upside down yoga pose and developed uh, paralysis from the neck down, quadriplegia, but her spinal MRI was normal. The other is our keen swimmer you just saw who apparently had a brain tumor which was operated on, but something doesn't quite add up about this brain tumor story. Firstly, if the tumor was operated on, then that means it would have been operable and the tumor wasn't huge, deep, or had spread much. So it shouldn't have left him with disability at the point where he's unable to speak and is permanently in a wheelchair unless he had complications from the surgery, which they then should have mentioned in the medical records. So I don't think this tumor story holds water, which seems to be the theme of this episode. So what can mimic brain tumors? Many of what I've suggested already can, like stroke, MS, or neuroparasitic infections. Also some congenital torch infections like toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus or herpes can also mimic brain tumors. I would definitely wanna get a full detailed history about when his paralysis and his brain tumor and difficulty walking started. It, was it before the operation is difficulty walking or after? Did he have a lesion that was caused by something else? And we took out part of his brain that left him in the wheelchair rather than the lesion itself doing it. Let's see. Quad with no broken neck. Struck me as odd. This could be MS. It's not MS. She had no symptoms before she climbed onto her head. What did she do over the summer? I... Redo the tests. Let's see if the source of the problem is in the limbs or the spine. Do an EMG. 
whilst her house is back from an eight week break after being shot by a criminal, had a ketamine treatment and is now pain free, and seems to be seeing the world through rose tinted goggles. Anyway, so sudden full body paralysis on turning upside down with normal scans. It sounds like it could be some kind of metabolic disease with exercise as a trigger. Could be like primary periodic paralysis, which is a group of conditions that causes similar signs to what she has. It consists of four main conditions, hypo and hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, which are two that cause changes in potassium that lead to paralysis. Uh, there's paramyotonia congenita, where the sodium potassium balance in your cells is off and anderson Tawi syndrome, where potassium doesn't move out of your cells properly. You see, potassium is very important for muscle contraction because you need it to depolarize the nerve in order to cause muscle contraction. In her, an EMG is a good idea, but you also want to do the usual blood tests, including potassium and creatinine ratios, head scan and genetic tests for the pathogenic mutations in primary periodic paralysis. Pa, pa, pa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got a whole other quad to cover. This guy's still got fluid in his lungs. Get him an O2 mask. His leg muscles have atrophied. Tendons have shortened from disuse, causing intense pain. Tendon surgery will make him more comfortable. More comfortable. More comfortable. Since when did House care about a patient's comfort? <laughs> Okay, whatever Android has hijacked Mark Zuckerberg has also hijacked House here. Clearly, now he's pain free, he sees the value of it for himself. He is valuing it more for his patients too. Now, the operation he's talking about is tendon surgery for contracture, which this patient doesn't seem to have, as you would have seen a deformity in the joint of the finger, or you might see that he's got like fixed inversion of the foot. But quad one seems to be sitting nicely in the chair. So a little inaccuracy there, but let's roll with it. Still good for sure. You smoke? How would smoking cause? Wouldn't. Just needed a lighter. Ah! House, my God. What? Okay, I should have seen that one coming, but, but does that mean she was faking? Reminds me of a pseudo seizure patient who used to come and see us on pediatrics who'd always get seizure when it was her maths class. I remember she was coming in on a uh, bed and she started having a pseudo seizure again and the nurse knew that it was kind of a performed seizure and so shouted out, it's time to get the rectal diazepam and all of a sudden, her seizure stopped. I guess having a hardened nurse's finger in her reverse pie hole questioned her commitment to the cause. To be fair though, if this patient did have intermittent paralysis like we had suggested, it could be that she's just coming out of it and now she can move and she was never actually faking in the first place, even though that's what House thinks is happening now. Need you, again. I told you to get rid of her. It's a good thing we didn't. Tightness in her chest, she can't breathe. It could be pleural effusion. I'm going to stab you! <laughs> Can't fake that. Wow, okay, so there's a lot to go through here. Clearly, she's not faking anymore and she is genuinely unwell. House. Seems like she had a pericardial tamponade, leading to heart failure and House sucked the blood out from around her heart, trying to relieve the pressure that's constricting it. When we do that in real life, we don't actually go Rambo style stab mode straight into the middle of the sternum because if you go too far, guess what's sitting very closely behind? The heart, which is kind of important. It's a short measured stab, which is usually ultrasound guided. Anyways, what could have caused this tamponade and her intermittent paralysis? Sarcoidosis is one cause. Another granulomatous disease could be TB. <laughs> I always say TB, it's always on my mind. Apparently she does smoke socially, which you know could make TB a bit more common as well. I wonder also if whatever she has is gonna be what our first patient who fell into the pool has as well. Then they can cure him by figuring out her disease. Wilson is making out like there's no diagnostic questions in patient with one case and House is treating him just out of kindness of his heart, but I'm sure they were linked together somehow. House is pain free, but he's not Mother Teresa just yet. That is not a sexy big toe. 
scurvy. Yeah, drink. Like, like what sailors get when they don't eat right? Aye, aye. Your arms and leg tissues are choked with blood. Makes it hard to move. Also damages your hair and toenails. Scurvy in her. Okay, here's a picture of what a scurvy patient looks like. Now you tell me what the problem is here. It causes bleeding gums, can cause your teeth to fall out and usually leaves red or blue spots on the shins. It is a serious lack of vitamin C. It usually happens in sailors when they were out at sea for a long time. They couldn't have any fresh fruit that could be a source of vitamin C. Treatment is with, well, you guessed it, vitamin C. So you'd give the woman some orange juice. Tropicana saves the day. We're in such a rush to make the patient feel better. You forgot to check what was wrong. Yoga girl walked out of here two hours ago. You fixed her. Not her, the other guy. He had brain cancer. They removed it eight years ago. His condition's been the same ever since. Until last night, he spoke. Oh, interesting. I mean, I knew he was still in there from the start, so it's not really a surprise, but it seems finally they're gonna focus on patient one, which I think is the more interesting patient of the two cases anyway. How did it relate to the other case? So she had vitamin C deficiency, so maybe his paralysis was caused by a C-spine lesion. Maybe he has a vascular tumor sitting there and it was missed or another tumor that was so slow growing, it wasn't picked up for the last eight years. And now they could see if they just looked with a scan. I would definitely want to rescan his brain and spine, do an EMG and general bloods but also for B12 deficiency and autoantibodies. I'm curious what the next clue is though. They're giving false hope to a family that's been wrecked. Don't torture them, let it go. Tell the wife it was only a grunt, tell her to go home. Oh, ice. Oh, his ketamine treatment seems to be wearing off. Pretty sweet 180 though. This is even more proof that my meaning is to react to this show since I like myself a bit of dangerous sports too. You may not know, but I am actually a qualified snowboarding instructor. Look, here's the proof. Check this clip out, that's me. Hey. Trust me, it felt a lot more impressive than it looked, okay? In eight years, a patient experienced 214 symptoms, many of them repeating. Any patterns? Abdominal pain plus all that stuff could equal a pancreatic cyst to an upper endoscopic ultrasound. Yes. Oh my god, that board is stressing me out. Now, if this patient has a pancreatic cyst, it could tell me a few things. The most common cause would be chronic pancreatitis, but they would have checked his amylase and that wouldn't cause paralysis and house doesn't deal with common. Another thing that could cause a cyst and his paralysis is a disease called von Hippel-Lindau disease. It's a genetic disease causing benign non-cancerous growths or cysts and clear cell renal cancer. If one of the growths, a hemangioblastoma, was sitting in his C-spine, that could cause all his symptoms. That is also a vascular malformation. If I'm right, seriously, oh, that would be very exciting. Let's see the result of this procedure. If they manage to do it without him having a cardiac arrest or a seizure, which I highly doubt. I don't think that's ever happened so far in house. I hope no patients ever ask what their procedure complication rates are when they get consented, because they're bad. The body and the head of the pancreas look plain. Get it out, get it out. It's stuck, I can't move it. His throat's collapsed. Cut it. Tracked him, endoscopically removed the probe, but he's breathing again. Who could have seen that coming? To be fair, the tracheostomy was good. Three to four centimeter vertical incision over the cricothyroid cartilage in the midline. Patient wouldn't have arrested that quickly though. Anyways, this is TV, not ED, so we'll let them on. His pancreas doesn't have any cysts, but maybe they weren't looking in the right place. Maybe the cysts are actually in his kidneys. He had frequent urination. I would at least do the previous tests I mentioned, like a urine dip uh, or microscopy and culture to see if there's any blood or infection in the urine and then maybe a kidney ultrasound after that. The suicide attempt was not a suicide attempt. He drove that wheelchair into the pool because he couldn't regulate his body temperature. He had hypothalamic dysregulation. Oh, did I just predict that? 
I knew it wasn't a suicide attempt, but I didn't quite get that it was due to hypothalamic dysregulation. Was that from his previous tumor that led to scarring of the hypothalamus from his surgery? There isn't really a primary condition called hypothalamic dysregulation. And how would that lead to all of the symptoms of paralysis? You know, maybe it could have disrupted the hypothalamus, pituitary axis, leading to um, loss of growth hormone and thyroid function. Um, that still doesn't quite fit though. So let's see what House thinks. I'm on a dead end here. But if the scar tissue on his hypothalamus is resting against the pituitary, the adrenals would shut down. Addison's disease. Addison's disease, that is such a stretch. So first of all, the hypothalamus is geographically a bit of distance away from the pituitary gland. So the scar tissue can't just press on it. Secondly, even if it did and it pressured the pituitary, you would expect it to disrupt the anterior pituitary hormones like in completion, not just ACTH, which stimulates the adrenals. So, you know, you'd expect the thyroid stimulating hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, growth hormone, prolactin to all be affected too. And that would have caused chaos on his blood work which they would have picked up fairly easily. Thirdly, even if he just has chronically deficient cortisol levels, which is what Addison's is, then his sodium and his potassium levels would also be totally off, which would show on the blood tests. Fourthly, Addison's disease is actually caused by defects in the adrenal glands or primary adrenal insufficiency. Um, and what House is describing is actually secondary adrenal deficiency since the messenger hormone that stimulates the adrenals is not actually getting there to stimulate the adrenals to release cortisol or steroid hormone. That is what's reduced. See, Universal Studios, if you hired me as a medical consult for this show, it wouldn't have happened. That being said, when this was filmed, I was 14 years old when it was an achievement if I got my socks to match. You could differentiate between primary and secondary adrenal insufficiency fairly simply using a short synactin test. You basically give artificial ACTH and you see if the adrenals respond by producing more cortisol. If they do, then that means you've got a secondary adrenal insufficiency. If they don't, then that means you've got a primary adrenal insufficiency, meaning that he's got Addison's and there's a problem with the actual adrenal glands themselves. Either way, if adrenal insufficiency is causing this patient's problems, then some cortisol should perk him up pretty well. So let's try it. I want to see a happy ending. This is cortisol. And it's to fight infection. Thank you. Wow, now this is the epic storyline that a $300,000 budget per episode gets you. What a slam dunk ending. I can't believe they didn't tell House that he saved the patient though. That is cool. I, I would love to see something like this happen in real life. But now is my turn. I'm gonna diagnose you. Seems like you've got a house reaction deficiency. Oh look, the treatment's just popping up over here. Go on, click, get the cure. Stay curious.